Hello, welcome back to City Planner Place, where we are taking the city of Starterville and increasing the population from 10,000 to roughly 25,000. So if you haven't seen my uh, previous video where I took Starterville from a population of zero to 10,000, go check that out. I'll leave the link right up uh, maybe near the top of the video here. <laughs> Um, so if you'll recall in the previous episode, we built everything that this city could need to get going and we used no DLC, no assets. This is completely vanilla. So if you got the game for free from the Epic Game Store or another source, this is the guide for you. Uh, so let's take a look at what we have so far and <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I, I was uh, letting this go a little bit while I was setting up the recording and, and we've gained population. In fact, we are at roughly 11,000 right now. So I think the thing about uh, this particular uh, period in the city's existence is you've got a lot of choices to make about uh, where you go from here. So we've got a little bit of everything. So if you look, we've got uh, two small police stations, we've got one fire department and uh, one fire station. We've got one clinic and one hospital. Uh, you know, we, we don't have some other services necessarily. Let's see. We've got one child health center, one elder care center. We've got a cemetery. And we have a number of milestones that we want to get to. So today we're going to get kind of midway through uh, Grand City towards Capital City. And that'll give us a couple of interesting things to unlock, like the solar power plant, bigger water treatment plant, a crematorium, uh, and, and train stations. Uh, and the other thing we'll be able to do is purchase tiles, which we haven't done any of just yet. And I'm not sure how many we're going to purchase outside of the one I'm going to purchase right now. So I'm going to purchase this tile, and there's a, the, one, one of the primary reasons I'm doing that is in the future, this rail line is going to become very valuable to us. Uh, but you might wonder, how do we get there? Well, we could just keep building out this collector roadway network that we have. We could use this uh, interchange to create a highway connection across, or we could do one of my personal uh, favorite things to do, which is actually take this and turn it into an arterial roadway and use a roundabout to make a connection with this collector. So before I go any further, I'm gonna pause this because I wanna start thinking about the roadway network. So I made this, uh, th th this road to loop around, but I think I'm gonna go in a different direction. So arterials are these six lane roads, large roads is what they're, they're called inside of uh, this menu. And I'm just gonna extend this quite a ways down. And uh, the, the reason why I'm doing that, and I'm gonna upgrade this as well, the reason why I'm doing that is I want this to act as my highway. So I'm not gonna connect very much up to this road at all, except for collector roads and these highway connections. I'm also gonna upgrade this connection that we have here, and uh, that'll kind of serve as the, 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 the gateway into the community. So I've got an issue. I've got to make a connection between this collector road and this arterial. And uh, I guess the question at this point is, how do I do that? Well, a roundabout is always a solid alternative. So what I like to do is I'll go up. See, I'm going up uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. And I'm actually going to eliminate this momentarily and mirror exactly what I just did. And now I'm going to go over to the freeform tool and it's really easy. Whoops. <laughs> it's really easy to make mistakes. <laughs> and I'm curious, this isn't lining up the way I thought it would, which makes me think that I went a little bit longer than I meant to. And that might be because I have the road guidelines on. So I'm going to turn those off and just keep grid on. That's all I care about right now. I'll again go out those five tiles, and now I'll try the freeform tool. 
and have much better success. You can tell that it's round because you can look at these tiles on the, in the middle and see that they're exactly the same except for this one. That's odd. But no bother, that's not a, not a big deal. It's going to work. So I like to keep that uh, cross in the center because it will prevent this from getting out of skew. And that means a lot to me. So whether I'm going in the side like that or I decide to do something a little bit more extreme. So I'm, I, I am using the, the, the freeform tool. I'm gonna to turn my road guidelines back on. And I want to try to meet up with this collector as square as I can. And when you have your road guidelines on, you can do that fairly simply just by following your road guides. And then you can upgrade these and uh, everything's pr fairly simple. So I'll make my other connections and then I will start upgrading these so that they are uh, arterials. Now around here, I don't want to inadvertently um, zone. So I am gonna upgrade this to a highway. You don't have to do that. You could certainly uh, use a two lane road here if you really wanted to. Uh, but with this, at least there's not gonna be weird lane changing things happening. I'm also gonna make this counterclockwise. And the main reason for that is when people are entering this, I want them to, to make a nice right hand turn, not a left hand turn into uh, this, this roundabout. And now I'm gonna eliminate that center square. And I always like to do a quick double check of my junctions to make sure that my priority didn't inadvertently add stop signs. Uh, sometimes when you set roadway priority, you'll get stop signs in your roundabout. You'll wonder why are things backing up? And that's why. So now let's resume this and see what happens. We'll speed this up for a second too. You'll see that traffic is flowing fairly smoothly through here. No real problems. We have problems, or where we do have problems, it's at these junctions that we've made to our collector. But we are going to remedy that too because, oh, and through the power of editing, again, we will eliminate the day-night cycle because <laughs> it's not going to help us right now. Uh, so we're going to add another roundabout to this collector. So I'm going to angle this in just so I know where I should be connecting. And then again, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before with the roundabout. Okay, when I said I was gonna do the same thing, I didn't intend to, uh, again, draw those uh, those connections a little bit longer than I was supposed to, but I did that anyway. <laughs> so, the main reason those were too long is um, this is a double width road, so I probably should have gone four tiles uh, away from the arterial rather than the, uh, rather than the five that I did. Kind of the same issue that we had with Main Street earlier. Okay, so one of the issues that we're going to have here is that this neighborhood is way too close to this collector. This junction should never be that close on the collector. So we might actually need to sever this connection here, which means that we'll lose a couple of houses, which is really unfortunate for those folks. Eminent domain in action. <laughs> but this will be a much safer junction as a result. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did in the previous location. Okay, and sometimes you'll run into some oddities with uh, when you're going to upgrade roads and you'll have to, to actually use the road you intend to upgrade, not use the uh, um, not use the dirt roads that I was using to make those connections. You, and you can see it's still causing issues. So I am going to eliminate this and kind of have an ugly junction because I think that that will solve the problems that we are seeing. And again, let's take a look to make sure we don't have any stop signs. We're good. 
and this should function really well now. So at this point, I might want to take a look and think about these connections here. Are they, do I want to make a connection here to, 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 to improve my zoning ability in this area? And for me, the answer is going to be yes. I want to increase the amount that I can zone. And I think I'm going to upgrade these roads to be uh, paved roads at this point in time. And it doesn't want to let me upgrade this road, but I'm not all that concerned. I'm happy to uh, just eliminate that road altogether. Not a super important roadway. I am going to go through the rest of at least the residential area and continue to make those improvements. I think that they're valuable. Unfortunately, we lost our rock feature over here, so I might want to quickly go in and add one back before we start seeing lots of things pop up in that area. So I did want to save that. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for me, but there we go. We got a new one. <laughs> All right, and to upgrading the rest of the roads. So you might notice that I'm, I'm uh, able to upgrade all of these in one sweeping motion. What I'm doing is I'm just holding on to the mouse button and going over and just highlighting all these roads and you can quickly and easily kind of hover over all of these. Unfortunately, I am demolishing a few properties that were a little bit too close to the road. Happens, not great, but uh, you rebound fairly quickly. So I decided to upgrade all of the commercial areas as well. And you might've noticed that there was this road over here that I couldn't upgrade. The main reason for that is that it's again, one of those uh, issues where there's a quick turn and you're unable to upgrade those. So sometimes you might have to go through and see if you need to do this after the fact. In this case, it's just not gonna work. So again, I think I might just eliminate that roadway connection and not worry about it all that much. So our population has increased a bit here just based on natural growth of the city within our existing zoning districts. And things are looking good. So what I'm gonna do now is I want to extend some of these collectors over and add another arterial heading south. I think it's important to not uh, go too far without uh, these, these connections. Oh, I'm noticing that I did not upgrade here. So I want to take one quick look, make sure I get the, the zones right. So 600 across. Then for the next one, I'm going to go one beyond the 600 because I'm going to, whoops. <laughs> As I say that, I don't. I'm going to go one beyond the 600 across because I'm going to have this be my collector heading up unless I want this to be an arterial in which case actually I think I want to because I'm gonna have an arterial connection here I'll, I'll go the 600 again because I'm gonna have an arterial connection going down and I am gonna separate that a little bit and now you might have noticed I'm using the, uh, the six lane road with decorative grass the main reason for that is it prevents um, it prevents the uh, it prevents parking on this road so if you don't want parking having any sort of decorative grass is is a way to do that okay so again I'm gonna add a roundabout here <laughs> you might be getting a little bit tired of roundabouts at this point but they are very useful
Okay, so we have a nice clean connection here, which gives us a lot of new building area to work with. The interesting thing about this is we're not going to really have any collectors through here unless we add one. We're probably going to want to do that. So what I might do is actually take this road, bring it up as a collector, making some sort of connection through here. Now I want to make this a little bit interesting. So what I might do is actually add a connection down through here and then just kind of turn it. So there are a, a couple of reasons you might want to do this and a couple of things you might want to consider uh, if you had uh, some natural landscaping feature to, to make this uh, a necessity that might be a, a, a rationale for doing it. In this case I don't really have that kind of rationale. The, my rationale is I think it would be interesting. <laughs> so maybe not the best rationale but it is one. I'm going to turn my road guidelines back on so I make sure that I am square with this other roadway. And I wanted this to kind of mirror this Hillside Hills district. So that's why I extended these roads out. They are not permanent. Those are just planning guides there. And I could again roundabout this, but uh, I think I might leave this one. It, uh, it's not overly concerning to me to have one. So. In this particular, uh, it, with this particular view, you might see the spacing that I have between these collectors, and it's fairly significant, and that's important. If you get these collectors too close to one another, you're going to see backups. So, and I want this arterial down here to be a really, really fast road. I want to prioritize uh, mobility on this road, not access. So, I'm not going to zone anything on that road. And I have another collector over here. I'm just going to connect that up right here with this uh, this collector that we have right here that we just put in. So we have some interesting things happening now. So I just kind of want to take a look to see if there's any other place that I can go with these industrial districts. They're kind of weird now. They're isolated in what will be the city. And we could leave that like that, and that's completely fine, and we might do that today. Uh, we could also, um, you know, reuse this district. And one of the nice things about using the same block sizes is that you could dezone this and make it something else in the future. So uh, we have options, and that's, that's uh, what we want to preserve, if at all possible. So at this point, I want to kind of just continue the grid going down... And we'll do blocks, like I said in the last video. One block at a time, no more. Or not, 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 not blocks, but one neighborhood at a time. No more, no less. So I am gonna remove trees in a couple of these locations so we, ha uh, locations so we have the ability to park. Otherwise, we're gonna be in a situation where there are no places for cars to park. So normally I preach to respect the topography. I totally disregarded the topography here and this is the result. You end up with kind of a janky road, pretty big dip there, but it will work. You can do that. Truthfully, I don't really love some of the things that they've done on the side on this on this map in general. So I'm not going to I'm not going to get overly concerned about it. So that said, if we wanted to do something a little more interesting, we wanted to respect the topography here, maybe we will. Let's take this down. How about an interesting row of, uh, of buildings along this kind of higher, higher ground? and we'll figure out how to work that in in the future, but those buildings are gonna be above the buildings uh, that are just a little bit lower than that. So it'll, it'll, uh, it'll make for an interesting transition. I think we might leave it like that, maybe add some trees in, in between. And now you can see that we could meet up with our existing grid here. 
where the topography allows it to happen. And I'm reestablishing my grid at this location. Now I'm always interested in the way that we get back to our grid, so I like to, to play with this a little bit. And this might be the way that I accomplish it, kind of bring this road over and have one big block and we'll put some pedestrian crossing, uh, cross access through there at some point in time. So I am about to end the grid work that I've been doing. And I think I am going to have one large block here now that I think about it. We'll try to back away from this intersection here as best we can. So let's so let's look at our RCI needs and respond directly to those. So I do think we want to continue some of our commercial uses along the main street. So I'm just going to extend those down and our utility connections will be extended in much the same way. I made a couple mistakes here. I like to keep the water lines under the road because that's where they belong. <laughs> so um, that's why I went back and, and made those changes. I know that some folks are more than happy to maximize efficiency and coverage, but uh, that's just not how it works in reality. You end up with a lot of extra water pipes, unfortunately, and I like to mirror that in the game. Create a realistic system. And I always loop everything as best I can because if you have natural disasters DLC at some point and uh, you have a, a water break because of a disaster, you're not completely out of luck then. And that's the way it is in reality too. Uh, you want to loop things so that if there's a disaster, you got to cut off a line, you are able to uh, still maintain service to those areas. Okay, so now I want to take a look at some other good uses that would uh, work well in this area. So I want to, I think I'm, I'm going to extend this, these office buildings along the shore, give them some pretty sweeping views, and uh, we'll put residential right behind that. So residential and office type uses go well together. Offices don't make much noise, residences like that. You could also use offices to buffer um, from commercial uses. So that's another strategy that you could employ. Uh, it's important to, to realize though that offices actually uh, count towards industrial demand. So when you add these office type uses, you're actually remedying your industrial demand. So this is a really long block. So I'm going to add some pedestrian connectivity through here. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to mirror the roadway network that I already have through here and make those connections. Very good. Okay, so I think I'll add one more path over here uh, just to kind of make this connection between this arterial and this local road. All right, so at this point, you know, we've, we've zoned a lot of non-residential land uses, but we need some residential land uses, so I'm going to extend those out as well. And I think for the most part, what I'm going to have back here are residential uses, but we're going to need some more services. So let's take a look at where our other services were. This is all high density, so I'm going to use some services that provide, uh, I guess, a little bit more service. <laughs> so we've got that. I think we're going to be in need of a, another cemetery and uh, you know I always get criticism because I like <laughs> I like to put cemeteries and crematoriums near hospitals that's not <laughs> I guess it's not a conscious thing that I'm doing it's just happening so I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to do that <laughs> oh I do not want that on a collector I'm gonna put that on the local road I'd like to keep my collectors free of ploppable buildings, if at all possible. Let's see, we need police coverage too. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly keeping an eye 
on my budget. Although I know that adding most of these services is going to mean that uh, our budget situation improves. So it, land values will go up, things will become more valuable, the city will be doing better. Uh, so I have, I have fire highlighted right now and I really want to pay some attention to that because right now this uh, this industrial area doesn't have great fire coverage so I am gonna add uh, a smaller firehouse over here just to make sure that our coverage is good hopefully that remedies this completely all right and let's take a look at our schools so we have good coverage or good availability, but bad coverage. So you can see that because you have all of these red spots and you can even see in, in the middle of this area, our elementary school coverage is bad. So truthfully, we could use eminent domain and add another school here. That would be beneficial. And then we're certainly gonna need one over here. And as our city improves, you'll see that the need for that will grow and I'm going to continue to have kind of like a government services complex in this area do we have a library yet we do but it's way on the other side of town and I think I'm gonna have one more so it's kind of that suburban library and then more of the urban library so because we're making a denser area over here and I, I want to boost up the land value knowing that this shore is going to kind of be where our density is our downtown um, I want to look at what we have for unique buildings and right now we don't have enough for any of them we had enough at one point and we'll get back there so I'm gonna speed up the simulation so that we start building our our uh, reservoirs again our our, uh, our our troves of cash and uh, eventually we will be able to to buy some things again so I'm, I'm kind of taking an inventory of everything and I'm noticing that our garbage processing is not doing so well at this point. So part of this is we are emptying these landfills. If you'll recall, we started doing that in the last episode. So once that's done, things will improve. And I do think in this area, it's also warranted to upgrade some of these roads at this point. Mulligan there inadvertently downgraded those roads. <laughs> Gotta be really careful when you're kind of just going through an upgrading like this because you can inadvertently downgrade. All right, much, much better. I do think we're gonna wanna take a look at our signals because I made that mistake and you can see we had a signal there because of the mistake. I kind of want to go through these and take a look just to make sure that on my collectors I am prioritizing that through route and it looks like I am in most places although I'm guessing in my new area and in some of the old areas we're gonna have issues you can see that my stop signs aren't necessarily right in all these areas and these signals right here are gonna cause backups and delay and they're just not warranted. You have local roads coming into a collector. You don't need to have a signal there. So this right here is an arterial coming into a collector. You absolutely need a signal there, or we could even do a roundabout. But I figure let's let's uh, stay clear of that for now. I'm kind of regretting what I've done here because I think that we could have a really unique building, kind of have a vista here from this road of that unique building missed opportunity could always use eminent domain later at a price that's 10 times higher than it would have been <laughs> just gonna fill that in and watch this thing balloon you can see things filling in really quickly our budgets improving let's see if we have enough for any of these unique buildings so this would be the time that I would start thinking about it so we have uh, the fountain of life and death now that might be a good one next to the hospital. <laughs> so I might sneak that in one of these kind of uh, interesting locations. Not too close to the hospital. 
So maybe not too offensive. <laughs> so we have the Mall of Moderation. We don't want that in our downtown area. But let's let's think about this. Where would we put the Mall of Moderation and what would we want there? Well, I would think that we would want spectacular roadway access. So let's say we wanted to build this and we wanted it to have good freeway access. First of all, let's put all the snap twos back on. So I'm kind of adding a, a frontage road to this arterial. And then I'm going to join this up with the network that we already have created. And I'll find one of those node points and line it up nicely. Well, maybe not too nicely. <laughs> I am going to try to improve that by making kind of a kind of a guide road for the time being. I'm going to eliminate most of this. Okay, much better. So now that we have this frontage road there, I think that we could put them all in moderation. Oh. Okay, I didn't give myself enough space. So I might actually just put this on the road here and then turn it around. Okay, so before I turn this around, I did notice a little bit of weird stuff happening with the ground. The grades are challenging here. So I don't want that to be all janky and crazy looking. So I'm going to go through into my landscaping tools and I am going to spread this out a little bit and you know, try to make it at least a little bit more palatable from a topographic standpoint. It's going to be very challenging and I don't know that that's going to help a ton. This just might not be the most suitable location for this. Might want to move it up. That's probably the best solution is to move it away and then we can grade towards it. Otherwise, our parking lot's going to be kind of crazy and undesirable. Oh, all right. We have crematoriums now, which I'm really happy about because uh, we were in a position before where uh, we were going to have cemeteries filling up all the time. So if we can at all avoid that, we should. Uh, we also have water treatment plants. We could buy another area. So all good stuff. And it slowed things down, which is also good. Got to slow things down a little bit more water pipes and I think that I am going to to have uh, well first I, I think I might build this roadway network out for one block just so I have a guide and I'm gonna use dirt roads because I'm not gonna really build anything here right now so the interesting thing is I have the the, the turn occurring at or but I have the the, the the turn occurring before my uh, my grid would normally end. So what I'm going to do is is use the guides that it's providing to make a nice connection here. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm I'm getting the node in the road, and then where the straight segment ends, I'm lining it up there with the straight road tool, and then I'm going to use the curved road road tool to connect up to my new segment. So continue down with the new grid. Continue out with the old grid, freeform into the route, and you'll get a perfect connection every time. Now, interestingly, this isn't all that far away from uh, the road that we've already established. So I'm going to turn off all of my snap twos now and make that connection a little bit nicer, a little bit more natural. It's not perfect, but that's okay. Okay, so. I think I'm just going to throw some some lower density commercial along here and then we'll finish out our residential uses in this area and I don't know who would want to live that close to a roundabout but there's always someone <laughs> so we already have utilities in this area so to me it would make sense to uh, zone in those areas and you know be deliberate about it you don't have to just zone everything you can certainly be choosy about where you're zoning 
Uh, I also want to do a little bit of decorating in this area. So, you know, you can do as little or as much as you want. Um, I know that there are different uh, paradigms for, for roundabout design. Uh, here in uh, the U.S., one of the things that we think about is we want to impede uh, the views through a roundabout. Because, so if you're coming into the roundabout, the theory behind it is if you can see that it's clear all the way around, you're going to go as quickly as you can around here. And a way to prevent you from doing that is to, you know, have some landscaping within the roundabout. And now, whoa, <laughs> landscaping from behind does not always work, apparently. Uh, so the, the, the thought now is that because you can't see through the roundabout, you're more likely to take it a little bit slowly and uh, that's desirable so you're coming down and what you see is uh, trees and rocks <laughs> so you're not going to speed through this you're going to be a little more cautious all right so very good there let's take a look at our garbage situation because this is a problem 45 percent full 20 percent full very good we've got a lot of industrial demand now and uh, so you might be wondering, what am I going to do about that? Uh, you know, I could build another industrial area. If I were going to, I'd want to make sure that I'm building off this arterial. I don't want any of this going through the local, uh, the, the downtown or the residential areas to get to uh, the exit of the city. I think it would make the most sense to continue building out this area, though. We've got some space. They've got good access. And until we have trains, which we don't have just yet, there's no... Oh, we do have trains. Well, that changes things for me. So if that's the case, I think that that is absolutely what we should do. So what I'm going to do is actually continue out this arterial network. And then we will join that up with a what will be a, a an important collector in the future and I'm only able to build this much infrastructure because I have done a, a very good uh, job with the budget so if you don't have uh, your budget in order you can't really kind of go hog wild with the infrastructure like this so that's why it's so important to upfront Really think about your budget and what, what you want to accomplish. Solar power is something I'm really interested in. I'd like to... So, you know, I, I could leave these these wind, these wind power plants uh, in operation. I'd prefer not to. I also am noticing that we are having some problems with water at this point. And I might upgrade our water situation. Get rid of these two pumps and replace it with a large one. So that's actually not going to work. If you look, so we have uh, the water treatment plant pollutes less. By less, I mean 85% of the water is clean. But it, the, the capacity is only roughly uh, 40,000 uh, 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 40, more than the, than the drain pipe. So we would need two of these. So I think we're going to do that now. Pause this start to clean up our water supply and stop killing all of the fish in the area <laughs> and try to be as, as minimally disruptive as, as possible understanding that some disruption and, and, and uh, eminent domain will likely be necessary okay so now we have that going and this should improve our uh, sewage treatment Availability once it's online. Did I look at the number? Okay, no. <laughs> I was going to say, the numbers look terrible. I think we're going to... So, you got to watch out with these, uh, these water pumps. If you have too many in the same spot, you'll end up using all of the water up in the area. And uh, you can, it can reduce the, the effectiveness of all of them. So, I'm going to 
take this and I'll connect it again to these other these other water pipes, but I'm going to move it away from them a, a, a little ways. So we're good there. When we're looking at utilities, let's look at let's take a real holistic look at everything. Really struggling with garbage. <laughs> 19%. I might juice us up a little bit there and uh, add an additional incinerator or two. Uh, I, I'm always really concerned when I see garbage backing up because I know that this will lead, once these turn red, it'll turn into buildings abandoning and, gar and ground pollution. If you have a, uh, uh, so that's not a big deal if you don't have a, uh, water towers but if you do and a water tower gets polluted it's very difficult to clean up without deleting your water tower which causes water problems and you'll get a death wave so that's the, pretty much the last thing you'd want to see is is a death wave so okay so now we have this collector that is going to be very useful for us and the reason why i say that is we're going to make a one-way road that uh, allows us to place a train station and uh, you know get some of the cargo benefits of that to the downtown area. Now, I would truthfully love to see a train station closer to this area, but we don't have anything in close proximity. The only way to get it would be to buy a tile over here and make a connection. Certainly could do that, but we're going to at least take advantage of what we can. So we'll build a cargo train terminal over here. And this doesn't have to be anything real fancy. Just something fairly basic that gets the job done. And we could have another industrial over here now, er, area over here now that we have uh, cargo trains in close proximity, if we wanted to. But even if we don't, there's a benefit to having this, and that is they're going to bring in imports to the city for our commercial area and we have a lot of commercial need over here so it's it's in our best interest to fulfill that need i'll have a temporary power line over here as well so the other thing that we could do and that i think we will do is uh let, let's add a passenger train terminal over here so you might wonder why am i adding just one very very good reason and that is if we have this passenger train terminal over here we can get tourists into our community so let's make that connection now Now I know there will be some people that absolutely hate what's happening here, and I do as well, so, um, sorry. <laughs> it's very bumpy, there's not a lot you can do to fix this without having the bridge as well. Uh, the only thing that could have potentially improved this would be some grading. I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can improve this in any way. Look at that terrain, that's, that's a challenge. This actually might lead me to just move this building over just a bit. I'm always nervous about the noise. You can see the coin of uh, the, the cone of, of noise around it. And I know that there are residence, re residential uses right here. This basically means that this area right here probably shouldn't be residential uh, because of all of the noise that will be generated. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, So I'm not sure that anyone's going to love this anymore, but I think it's better than what we had, which was pretty terrible. And I'm going to use the nodes to kind of try to make this a little bit straighter. And it's important to remember that uh, the, the gentler the, the curves, the faster speed your trains will get. So this is going to be a slow turn because that's a pretty sharp curve. But it's also very tight so you know it's it's a space constrained area i guess you gotta you gotta pick your battles sometimes and the battle i'm gonna pick right here is with the terrain <laughs> i 
and I will lose. <laughs> so it looks like that little hump is going to be there and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, sort of rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding it. This will probably function fine. So I'm going to leave it. So I might double down on some of the noisiness in this area. And there are a few things that we can start to think about. First, we don't really have any transit besides this this uh, train station, which is really serving you know vehicles that are coming into the city, not necessarily anything that is going and operating through the city. So I want to start to think about that. And uh, the way that we're going to think about that is is by adding some bus service. So I think we'll take a look at this. I think that this could be another kind of uh, kind of an opportunity. So I am so when when you have a bus service, you need to make sure that you have the bus depot and then you can place buses. I'm surprised that that did not make the power connection. Huh. Well, let's do that real quick. And then let's place some bus lines. So whenever you're designing a bus route, so I want to make a bus route that basically goes down this main street and turns around at some point. So it's a very dense corridor. You want to send bus routes, if you can, down dense corridors, connecting up origins and destinations. So origins are where people would get on the bus and destinations are where people would want to get off. So if you are going... So this, for instance, I have a... Uh, 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 this would be an origin here. Now, where would someone at the train station want to go? Well, they might want to go to this office district. I know that I'll have offices here in the future. Bus service uh, can have more stops than other uh, types of transit. Just understand every stop you add slows down your trip. <laughs> so, um, makes it less attractive. So, I'm going to go every three blocks or so. And then I think I'm going to loop back around kind of near this, uh, this area over here. Now I'm going to parallel kind of back behind. So I want this route to do two things. I want it to, to have, uh, origins and destinations. So the origins are going to be these homes back here. And I know that I have some density about a block away. So that should do the trick. And then the destinations will be the commercial uses along the front of the route, or that along the beginning of the route. I'm just trying to line that up. Okay, so now we have a complete route, and I'm gonna do the exact opposite route because we need to be able to serve this in both directions. And I think that people forget that sometimes. Um, Bus routes are actually generally mirrored. That's unless the, the bus is pinging up and down a street back and forth, in which case maybe it's not. We could have structured that this route in that way as well and then just had double the buses on this route. But I thought it would be interesting to, to show a different type of route. Uh, alternatively, we could is decide we want a, uh, a bus route that connects uh, from this origin to a destination like the mall. So that's another option. So let's do that. So I might actually start this on this uh, dead end street so we could turn around there. We'll go to the mall. I'm going to actually add a turnaround here. And then let's see. Let's move this move that to the turnaround and then connect up right there yeah that will do the trick it's just gonna kinda ping back and forth between those routes choosing the best fastest way to get there both times so that will work well and to differentiate I go into here and I change the colors so whoop so I know that route one and two are the same so I'll keep those colors the same I'll keep blue for kind of my my uh, commuter route or not commuter but I guess tourism route back and forth between the mall still no power at the mall which is unfortunate let's speed things up and see if that fixes this 
no luck. So let's take a look at our trash situation. Uh, almost empty there. Let's build out this industrial area. So I didn't have to get a little weird with that road. I just thought it might be interesting. Kind of uh, give the grid a little bit of a uh, little bit of flavor. <laughs> so that's why I did that. Now you'll recall that in the previous episode, I added some offices along this collector uh, to serve some of these uh, industrial uses. And I'm going to do the same thing. They're not big chip tr trip generators, so they can certainly survive on a collector like this. They, al they also aren't noisy. They'll do a little bit of good work to block some of these externalities of the industrial area from these residential uses. And let's take a look at our, our, our uh, traffic. 89%, not bad. City's still growing well. We don't have a ton of money. I wanna speed this up again because I really want some money. Uh, so we have some parks that we can add at this point. And uh, the land value in our older parts of town is really good. Not so good in our newer parts of town. So I think I'm going to try to serve these residents with some services and uh, they're gonna be some more intense services now I probably should have placed some of these parks prior to development that's how it would generally occur but because I didn't I have two options I can either retrofit them around the outside which is you know a pretty okay solution particularly if you're going with something for something like this that's big or I could just bulldoze things and, and call it a day. The other thing I think I might work well in this area would be to create a fishing island. You could use eminent domain, take one building, create this fishing island that makes everyone happy. See what that does to our land values? Nothing. <laughs> it does nothing. So let's take another look. So one of the things you can look at, you can see what it does so the entertainment there is 60 okay entertainment of the Japanese garden 120 now the radius of this is okay so it's, it's at a Japanese garden near the police department and see what that does immediately everyone's happy but it's really localized so those are something things to think of, think about when you're placing these uh, for the fishing island you might need a couple of them so we have this basketball court that's 120, so it's a lot like the Japanese garden, except the radius is significantly larger. So I think that we could get away with placing this over into this neighborhood and making a ton of people happy. We could add one over here as well and have kind of a park complex. And we have really improved the land value over here. Now, I'm not one of the people that thinks you need to have perfect land value everywhere, uh, perfect happiness, uh, because happiness equals land value in city skylines. So if you have 100% uh, perfect land value throughout this entire thing, you're going to notice that uh, basically everything's really expensive. And you can see that when you, when you take a look at this land value. And so Beach Hills, our original area, 55 uh, cells per square meter 58 and more square 49 uh, so you know you can really get into it get into kind of a, a challenging spot with affordability if you improve things too much I might just add a couple of districts just so I can see the district value I, I like doing that so I can keep an eye on my affordability sunset hills 38 which you know might not sound all that impressive but that's right that's average it's a little little more than average including in some of these industrial areas that's fine everyone deserves a place to live so make the city affordable it doesn't need to be so expensive that only the wealthiest elites can live there <laughs> at least that's that's the way i think anyway so these are empty now and i want these gone 
I absolutely despise the landfills. As soon as I can get rid of them, I do. They're not helpful uh, over the long term. The main reason I say that is I have to keep emptying them. So, okay, I'm adding industrial uses along the backside. Of this, I know that I'm probably not going to buy this tile anytime soon, so I might as well develop. All right, we have leveled up again. So we've got money out of that. We get the third loan. We get a solar plant, which I'm very excited about because we can start greening up our energy and uh, you know potentially discontinuing some of these windmills that, while they're an interesting feature, make it difficult to develop in this area. So. Um, probably leave them for the time being, but now we have options. So let's take a look. And I also kind of want to take a look at our policies. Where are we at with our policies? So I think at this point, you know, we have, we don't have any recycling centers, but if we were going to, which I don't think we, ha yeah, we don't have that in, in the, uh, <laughs> we don't have that without any, uh, DLC, so that's interesting. So we can have this policy. It'll reduce garbage accumulation and reduce tax income. I think we're we're probably good now. Let's take a look. We're okay. Yeah, our processing status. We're, we're kind of on the edge. I'm kind of curious what that policy is going to do if I enact it. Let's do that. We'll take a look. That's actually a pretty significant improvement. We lost about looks like 500, 750. I'm not, I'm not a thousand, <laughs> more than a thousand. All right, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. But I think that that might have been a good policy for us to enact. And then I, I, I've talked a lot about these, uh, these unique buildings. And I think I want to start building some, or some more rather. So we have a couple that I think are neat. So we have this stadium. We also have an expo center. We have this winter market and the opera house. So I want the opera house to be prominently featured. I think that that might be what I retrofit into this area. So we're going to use a lot of eminent domain in this area. Ooh, that's going to be a challenge. So I would say that this is generally not a great idea, <laughs> but I really want this to be a stunning view of the opera house and the city's gonna spend dearly to make that happen. So, okay, we've backed out all these roads. Now let's figure out a way to make all of these connections. So these are gonna be some ugly connections. I do not like these at all, but sometimes you can't always get what you want, which would be a nice clean connection. Not in vanilla anyway. <laughs> so, and not without any DLCs, uh, not, well, oh, well, that's even worse. <laughs> Just wholesale eliminating. So this police station is really a limiting factor here, but I don't want to eliminate it. So I'm just going to leave that and hope that you can all unsee that just like I'm trying to. Because <laughs> it is very, very much ugly. And around this, I'm actually going to place some office type uses to kind of block that sound from the residential uses that are already kind of starting to crop up around there. So hopefully that will help. And the nice thing about this is now we already know that we have a bus stop, I think probably right in front of this. It's close to it. It's pretty close too. So it's like right in the middle. So if you were at either of these stops, you could walk to this. This is going to dramatically improve the land values here. I hate that it can't be centered, <laughs> but it can't be. It, it, uh, it just can't be. So at least I don't think so. That is centered. I'm just gonna kind of slide this around until I am Okay, I actually, that's that's pretty darn close. Let's see if I can go just a little bit more. Oh, I did it. 
that is perfect. Imagine driving down this road and seeing the Opera House, the crown jewel of the city right there. What a great, great view. That's awesome. So uh, I'm not done though, unless money says I'm done. <laughs> and money does say that I'm done. So I wanna reserve this spot over here, I think for the stadium, because I think it would be great to have excellent access to the stadium from the train. And we allow, are allowing inner city trains here. We actually are getting 110 passengers a week. I do think I want to grade this a little bit, so I'm going to go to my smallest tool. I will highlight that same old, same height, kind of pull it back a little ways, and then feather it out. And that will allow me to create a bit more natural of a, of a grade. Perfect. Now how about some landscaping in this area? Now as I'm worrying about landscaping, I'm seeing this backup, and that is a, an, a problem of my own creation. So this train wants to go towards our cargo terminal, and they can't. So I just, I'll do that, and I will need to give them a, a better full train length. So this is kind of one of the putsy things you have to deal with with trains sometimes make this really sharp and really upset some people <laughs> so that is not good at all but it's connected which means that it will work and at least it's a full train length I think at this point so there won't be any backups like we had it's it's just right it's just right if it were any shorter you'd have the same backup problem that we had before but we don't have that problem, so we're not going to worry about it. So, okay. A little bit more. I want to, I think, finish out this area towards this collector. And I think we're going to have a mixture. So first, I know that this road is not right. We're going to need to extend this out a little bit. Okay, so we've got some growth occurring, and I think that we're going to, I mean, this is going to be kind of an office complex. Maybe I'll do one more row of residential, just because it's, it's really a shame to have all of these residential uses and not be in any way close to, uh, or, or to have all of these residential uses near this much transit and not, uh, uh, not take advantage of that. So I'm growing impatient. I want 200,000 cells, dollars, whatever you want to call them, to, uh, to be able to, to actually build this stadium. So I might take out a loan. I know I can pay it back quickly. Ooh, interesting. I've been cranking up the power in the water. Yeah, now my electricity availability and water availability aren't so good. All right, well, just kind of wanted to see where we were at with that. Let's put it back. So we'll take out a small loan, and that will give us just enough money to bankrupt ourselves as we build this plant or this uh this state uh, this uh, stadium. And uh, you know, that would seem to be pretty rational to me. Cities spend a lot of money on stadiums <laughs> sometimes more than maybe they should I'm gonna make this connection perfect right through there we need to get some water in this area and then we're gonna zone the rest of it and you know now that I'm thinking about it I might actually I'll do a row of offices and then let's see So, this is where I'm bumping into the limitations of having this without DLC. I was going to make this a nightlife district, but there is no life, nightlife to be had in the city. <laughs> so, uh, our nightlife is uh, the, the stadium. Uh, I think nightlife came with 
Sunset Harbor, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, just something to be aware of if you plan on picking up any DLCs. So we are having some trash collection troubles. That's kind of predictable if you think about how far away our garbage processing is from this area. So you can even see that in this area, the, the, collection, or the coverage is not good. So to fix that, a couple things we could do. We could add processing near this, uh, this cargo train terminal. I think I might do that, just kind of relocate a couple of these over here. And I don't mind this, although I do want to take a look at the signals. I think we are unnecessarily signalizing one of these. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of loading going on here, but it's a one-way road, so it should be okay. 87%. This road is becoming a real challenge. It's not surprising because you know you can see travel patterns. There's this looping around. There's the secondary coming through and then going up and even going into this mall. It's another one. So lots of different patterns there to consider. And, uh, you know, if you start to notice that things getting too challenging in, in, in any one area, you've got a couple options. You can either reduce density uh, or, you know, so in this area, it's probably not going to be in my best interest to continue this level of density on the other side of the road. I'm going to want to taper this back and uh, take it down a notch because <laughs> you know, we've got a lot going on. Uh, alternatively, we could have a high rise ban in this area which would be another way to handle that. So the high-rise band will prevent these from going to level five or level three, uh, or, or at least presenting in that form. And that can be nice if you want to still maintain um, density, but, but not get the max density possible. So we have some sick citizens here, and I'm guessing it's noise. Let's take a look shoot absolutely is noise so that tells me that I let this get a little bit too close we might see these problems elsewhere I am going to dezone these replace them with an office see if that helps that's that's always one of the dangers so I'm curious looking at noise how is it back here we actually have a little area over here that we could add a little bit more density in this area, uh, clearly behind the train stations, not so good. We could try to mitigate some of that. Let's see, for instance, we will add some landscaping. Let's see what it does to the noise. Nothing. <laughs> so I thought that it might help, but uh, yeah, nothing. It's not, not doing anything for us, unfortunately. So in real life, we, we would actually, with this kind of use, likely require a significant amount of landscaping to, to, to capture some of that sound definite as it uh, approaches some of the residential uses. Ooh, power issues everywhere. What is going on? All right, we've grown too much. So I've been talking about this solar plant. I think now it's time to put our money where our mouth is. We talk about going green. Let's do it. And you might think this is an odd location. Why not just put it next to these industrial area, this industrial area over here? Well, I think it's weird to have, whoo, I missed water pipes all over the place. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> but it does happen. Not in real life, but in the game, for sure. <laughs> I don't think anyone would ever go, yeah, I'm gonna build this building without water. Uh, they wouldn't get a certificate of occupancy, so they'd never be able to move in, and they would come knocking, for sure. Very upset. Do we have any other areas like that that I've just wholesale forgotten utilities? I don't think so. Just that one. Okay. So now, 
our garbage processing status. We've got coverage over here. I want to build this area and take a look. So let's look at our topography. Yeah, that is going to be a challenging area to work with, but we can do it. So what I'm going to do is kind of just work this up the hill and we'll have a weird downtown cul-de-sac. <laughs> and I think I'll also send another road down here, kind of mirroring the low point. And we'll use some eminent domain to make this connection here. This is something I wish I could do in my day to day. There are places where I notice that just a small roadway connection could make all the difference in the world and there's just nothing I can do about it or that I'll ever be able to do about it in my entire career. And uh, it's painful sometimes, <laughs> but but uh, there's not much that can be done, like I, like I said. So I'm going to add these residential uses up here and I will make sure that they have that they have water. So we've got this, you know, pretty intense downtown area happening, lots of density. Let's take a look. Some traffic, it's not that bad. Traffic flow is still really good. If, uh, if I were building this city, I'd probably round it out with some lower density uses and kind of just continue them along this way. So I think that's how I'm going to end this one. Uh, Cause I think we will meet our density, uh, our desired density by building out this residential area. Ooh, interesting. So I said interesting because we uh, are actually in a spot where it's directing us with the road guidelines to go 10 and a half tiles and have some funky grid work. Okay, I'm going to leave this block kind of big. We'll just, we'll say that that's fine. We'll expand a little bit here with these roads. And this will be this, you know, you, you, there's a lot of talk about urban agriculture, urban, uh, urban, uh, for, uh, urban farming. I don't know how else you describe this besides urban farming. We're leaving this farm in the middle of the city. <laughs> and those do surprisingly exist sometimes. Um, often though, I mean, you'd see this and the land value in this area is going to increase to a degree that it no longer makes financial sense for the owner to maintain that as a, uh, to maintain that as a farm. I mean, they could make a farm 10 times bigger somewhere else if they wanted to. Um, so that's that's generally what happens, but sometimes you, you get an owner that you know really likes their location. They have some history associated with it, and they'll keep it. Okay, so just going to build our water pipes so we don't forget about them again. Oh no, I don't like that at all. We uh, must fix that. That's not perfect, but it's a lot better. All right. So this area will build out. I think we're going to hit our 25. And that's great. So I want to thank everyone that asked me to continue this series. I never thought of making it a series. It was kind of just a, a one-off. But the, the, the goal from here on out will be to reach those critical milestones. So I think we're going to from uh, this episode after reaching 25,000 we're going to reach 50 and after 50 we'll reach 100 or something along those lines uh, while building out kind of a, a nice little community that's balanced doesn't have much traffic and works well so you'll see that this road that we built at the start of the episode it's carrying all that traffic that I think people would normally build you know massive highways for and that's just when the community is this size, it's just not necessary. So I wouldn't get overly uh, crazy about, you know, having a whole bunch of uh, highways all over the place. It's just not warranted. You could certainly upgrade some of these things in the future. And you, if you were, if you were going to do that, reserve that space up front. Keep these neighborhoods a block further back, and you could do that. Or 
reserve the space south of here and have the highway shift. Either way, um, you know, you could give yourself those options while still having uh, a, a community that functions well with with uh, normal roads, just arterials and collectors and local roads. So I find that these highways are barriers more than they're helpful. So I. You know, it's kind of an old school 1950s mindset to have highways all over the place. So I don't do it. I, I think that what you're seeing more and more now is is highways being torn down in favor of local roads, collectors, and arterials to, to create a more intimate pedestrian experience, uh, the ability to cross roads and connect neighborhoods. And that's what I want to em emulate in the game. I don't want to emulate the mistakes of the past. <laughs> so I try not to, if at all possible. So we have a few hundred more residents to reach our, uh, our goal. So I'm going to do some light detailing, I think. Kind of interested in taking a look at the sound issues again and you can kind of see that there are issues in some of these areas and we might want to upgrade the roads to handle some of those sound related problems so i'm just going to upgrade this collector going in to try to minimize some of the issues that these residents would be having as a result of being right on this collector road right near this industrial area I'm basically doing the exact same thing all the way up and down the main drag because this is where we have sound pollution. The nice thing about having this, this, this strong collection of collector roads through here is you now know where all of your sound problems are because most people are going to be taking those roads. So I'll do the same thing in this neighborhood. Now I know this removes parking, which is unfortunate. We do have good transit service here, so hopefully that mitigates some of the damage of not having parking anyway. And I'll still allow it on the side streets. Except for right here. And you can see that controls the, 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 the sound pollution a bit better. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. And with that, we have reached 25,000. So I'm very excited about where this is, is going. I think it's a, a nice little city that we're pulling together with just the base game. We certainly have some improvements that we can make soon. One of the improvements I'd like to make is to kind of clean up this road. Uh, the trees are dying because of the pollution and I think that we could improve that. In fact, before we go, we are going to rezone. Uh, normally this would be adaptive reuse. We'd take these old industrial warehouses and they'd become some really trendy, cool lofts. But that's not where we are at with this game <laughs> in terms of its capabilities. And I might take this a whole block back. And uh, this will eventually, as the ground pollution dissipates in this area, first of all, it's just gonna be a much more pleasant uh, pedestrian realm. Um, I, I think I would much rather walk past a bunch of offices uh, than a bunch of factories <laughs> that are spewing pollution into the air uncontrolled. Uh, but you know, it's 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 a uh, it's certainly helpful with uh, these these center medians uh, in making them look a little nicer. And since we put those up to to mitigate some of that sound, we're also going to receive some benefits there from that. But we're also going to receive it because we've taken those those industrial uses and moved them a block back so good all around so i hope that you've enjoyed this episode if you have please consider uh liking this video if you aren't yet subscribed to my channel please consider doing so and if you want to be notified when i make new content like this please hit that notification bell and let me know in the comments if you found this video useful or helpful and you want me to continue the series i like i said i do continue on doing that now that I've heard positive feedback from you, but I, I want to know 
if this was what you thought it was going to be and if it's still uh, beneficial for you. I am going to leave you with a cinematic on the way out, and I uh, I hope you enjoy that. Uh, Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.